In computer science, you may have heard of the term big O notation. Normally, it's used to describe the speed or some other aspect of performance of an algorithm. You may even intuitively know that an O n log n algorithm is faster than an O n square algorithm. But the question is, what does that really mean in terms of a rigorous mathematical definition? Speaking of a rigorous mathematical definition, how do we reliably and correctly compute whatever it is we want to compute with an algorithm? Are there other applications of the big O notation? Are there similar notations that, you know, works out of the same way? Well, all these other questions we're going to try and answer throughout this series. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into episode 1 of Asymptotic Notations. Hello and welcome to episode 1 of Asymptotic Notations. What we're going to do is we're going to start from the intuition first. We're going to try and have a rough understanding of how, you know, all these notations actually work. And then we'll work our way towards the actual mathematical definition. Technically, this is a little bit backwards. In schools, we try to understand the rigorous mathematical meaning first, and then we try to apply that to algorithms. But now that I think about it, since this concept is a little bit abstract, it will be nicer to start from the intuition so that, you know, throughout this entire series, you can keep coming back to your basic understanding of how we actually want to apply these notations. So hopefully you can get behind this idea. Hopefully this technique will work for you. But let's jump right in. Let us begin by actually seeing the big O notation applied. For the beginners with no background, let's start from just describing what this whole notation thing is. We can describe some aspect of an algorithm with a notation that looks like this. We read this as O n, and this is an expression in the big O notation. What this notation is trying to describe is it's trying to characterize some property of an algorithm, for example its time complexity, with respect to the size of its input. In this case, that would be n. So with an input of n items, how will a particular algorithm perform? I know this is pretty vague, so instead of continuing like this, let us jump in to look at some examples. Let's start with a very simple algorithm called linear search. Basically, what you have in linear search is just an array of items, and you want to find one particular item inside the array. The way you approach this in linear search is you simply start at the very beginning of the array, and basically you keep visiting every single item until you find what you're looking for. Or if you hit the end of the list and you still don't find it, then the item isn't there. In terms of the time complexity of this algorithm, in other words, how long it will take to complete with respect to the size of the input, it is an O n operation. Why? Simply because if you give it n items, then it will do n things. It will look through n items. So having a time complexity of O n tells us one characteristic of this algorithm, and that is the more items I give it, the more time linearly it requires to actually perform what it needs to perform. I know I've left several questions unanswered, but we'll come to them. Let's instead switch gears now to look at a different algorithm called selection sort. The objective of this algorithm is of course to sort a list. So you want to actually, you know, set everything in ascending or descending order. The way selection sort approaches this is it runs through the list, finds the smallest item, and chucks it at the front of the list. Then ignoring the one item that is already in place, we'll do the same for the rest of the items. You have to repeat this again and again until at the very end, everything is sorted. So let's take a look at how many operations are actually happening here. In the first pass, we look at n items. We run through a list of n items, and then we pick out the smallest item. Then in the next pass, we look at n minus 1 items, and then we pick out the smallest item again. We have to do this again and again for as many items as there are in the list, and as a result, you can very simply think of this as an algorithm that looks at n items n times. In other words, the number of comparisons it actually performs is roughly n times n or n squared. Which is why in a big O notation, we actually quantify the time complexity of this algorithm as O n squared. 
And that is where the intuition comes from. The more work your algorithm needs to do, the longer time you expect it to take. And as a result, you expect it to show a larger Big O notation. But then again, the Big O notation can actually mean a lot more. Now, let's go back to our earlier example of linear search. Imagine what's going to happen if the item you're looking for is the very first item in the list. Realistically, you've only looked at one item and you've basically terminated after that single iteration. You didn't have to look at n items, so can we classify it as O n? Well, yes we can. You see, when we express time complexity in a big O notation, we are representing a maximum. What this means is when we say linear search is O n, we will never expect it to look at more than n items. n is the maximum. Also, the big O notation is more versatile than just representing a time complexity. We can also use it to express a space complexity. And the concept is very similar. We express it as a maximum amount of space that an algorithm will use. For example, just think about how linear search works. Realistically, we just need to maintain a single pointer that goes through the entire list and just checks the one item that is encountered with the item we are looking for. In other words, whether you give linear search a list of 10 items or a thousand items, you don't expect it to use more memory. You would expect the additional memory used to be exactly the same, which is why linear search is considered O1 or constant in terms of space complexity. And just for the sake of completeness, the same is true with selection sort. Because it doesn't actually create additional arrays or anything like that, there is no additional space use. Selection sort is also O1 in terms of space complexity. So what we've just done today is we've actually looked at big O notation in terms of two examples. I know that's not a lot, but hopefully it's enough to give you an impression of how big O notation works intuitively. It is a marker for performance, whatever that means. And we'll go into trying to explain that in more rigorous terms as the series progresses. So yeah, hopefully this first episode is enough to whet your appetite and get you more interested in this subject in general. We will of course be looking at the more difficult questions as we move along. That's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.